Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the uh, Poisset's Law Redux. But now what I want to do is I want to uh, take that model of, of fluid flowing, and I want to apply that to a very different kind of flow, but, but hopefully you'll see that it's actually a very similar concept going on. And that is I want to take a look at something called an electrical... an electrical circuit. Okay, so in an electrical circuit, let's just take the, the most basic of all electrical circuits, okay? So let's just take a battery. All right, I have a battery here. And again, I'm gonna make this very big picture for now. All right, and then I'm gonna have a wire like so and that's going to hit hook up to one terminal and it's going to go to the other terminal. Okay? And that's an electrical circuit. So the battery, the battery is kind of a if you want to look at it as is kind of a reservoir um, and it's full of electrons, okay? And electrons um, when I get a whole bunch of electrons together, of course, the electrons don't really particularly want to be near each other and so they're going to have this tendency to want to flow away from one another so the battery in an electrical circuit is very much like kind of like the pump that we talked about in a fluid circuit where the battery um, creates driving okay driving pressure and instead of pressure for a, a fluid um, the like water or a gas mixture, um, it's not going to be a fluid flowing through this this circuit, but rather it is going to be electrons. But these electrons are going to act very much like a fluid. Okay, that's what I mean. But that's what electrical circuit is. It's just a circuit where I have electrons. Okay, so I have electrons flowing, and let's just say that they're going to want to flow in this direction through this circuit here. Okay and they're going to kind of want to flow this way here, okay? Well, the battery is a way of producing a driving pressure, and the term for driving pressure in, in electrical circuits is something called voltage, okay? Something called voltage, okay? So we've all heard of the term, you know, something is high voltage and, and this and that, and it's, it's, really, it's really tough because I think there's a lot of misconception on what what voltage really is. Voltage is nothing more than driving pressure, okay? Um, you can have a lot of voltage and not necessarily have a lot of electrons flowing, right? Um, so voltage doesn't necessarily mean that you have a lot of electrons flowing. It just means that there is the potential for electrons to flow because voltage and driving pressure are both forms of potential okay potential energy okay both both voltage and driving pressure okay they're just forms of, of pressure when looking at it big picture okay now uh, the higher voltage the more voltage I have the more potential I have um, certainly the more potential there is for electron flow, but what are some things that can um, affect the electron flow? Well, let's talk about that. The same things that basically affect how fluids flow in a circuit, and that is resistance. Okay, the resistance. If I have a high voltage but high resistance, I may not have a whole lot of flow occurring here. But if I have, let's say, relatively low voltage but very low resistance, I may have very high flow. Um, and this is not unlike uh, a fluid circuit at all. Okay, so I have voltage, which it can produce the potential, and then um, the actual flow of the electrons will depend on the resistance, and the resistance in electrical circuit can include you know how you know how big is my wire how long is the wire how much how much of, of it um, and then what 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 is the um, the what is the wire 
um, constructed of? You know, is it something that is not particularly conductive, um, and there's it doesn't conduct these electrons very well, and that adds resistance um, as well. And then the final part of the circuit, of course, is the actual flow. Okay, it's the actual flow of electrons themselves. So, if I put a certain voltage um, across a circuit with it has a certain resistance, um, I am going to have a certain flow. And the measurement of flow um, in an electrical circuit is uh, something called current. Okay, current. Okay, so current is nothing more than measure of flow, electron flow. Now. In a, in a fluid circuit, we typically you know have some volum volumetric a way of, of, of measuring, um, you know like a, a liter per minute or milliliter per second or you know something like that. Um, that's not going to be the case in electrical uh, circuit. We're actually um, measuring how much charge flows through um, a certain point at, at, over a certain amount of time. Um, and that's how we measure current. I'm not going to talk about the units so much as just the idea. Uh, so these three ideas are not unlike um, electrical or not unlike fluid circuits. And um, these three ideas make up uh, the cornerstone of what's known as Ohm's law. Ohm's O H M S Ohm's law. Okay, I think there's an apostrophe there. Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is very similar to Poisset's law. The, the model that you can put in your mind is, is very much the same. And uh, an easy way for me to remember that is just to kind of draw a triangle like this and then break that triangle into three sections and put a V on top, an I on the left, and an R on the right. Voltage, okay, so I have my voltage, I have my resistance and I, I is is what we call our current. Okay, and so I can make some I can make a basic formula um, I the current um, which is nothing more than the flow, the electron flow or current equals voltage divided by resistance and that kind of makes sense. It's pretty much Poisset's law here, right? Um, it's just rearranged a little bit. The um, the voltage is nothing more than my driving pressure. And um, the and then resistance to that driving pressure. If the resistance go, gets low, lower resistance, and the voltage stays the same, then my current's going to increase. And if my voltage stays the same but the resistance decreases, well, um, the current will increase. Likewise, if the resistance stays the same but the voltage increases, then I'll have more current. I'll have more flow. Uh, likewise, if the resistance stays the same and the voltage decreases, my current will remain the same. Um, so I, and this triangle can be really helpful, I equals V divided by R. Now, if you, uh, you can easily rearrange these algebraically, okay? Um, so if I wanted to solve for R, okay, so I pull R out, R equals what? Well, that's going to be V divided by I. R equals voltage divided by current, um, or if 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 you uh, uh, the algebraically rearranging things doesn't work, you just kind of go over here to the triangle up here, and you go R equals V over I there, and then finally voltage V equals I multiplied by R I multiplied by R okay. Um, so these are the three uh, critical components of Ohm's law, and you can see Ohm's law is not all that indifferent, indifferent from Poisset's law, at, at least conceptually. Um, so um, when it comes to Ohm's law, when it, remember when I talked about fluid dynamics, and I said that it really comes down uh, when we talk about fluids, the, the three things that are important are the uh, the driving, the driving pressure. Okay, uh, the resistance. Okay, and then the actual flow itself, and then in electronical electrical circuits. Okay, these ideas can be replaced. Driving pressure is is replaced with the concept of 
voltage, okay, it's still potential, is still a potential. Um, resistance remains resistance. And then flow becomes current. And of course, there are different units that we use to describe these uh, because we're talking about the flow of, of electrons of negative charge uh, versus the flow of a volume of fluid. But we can get to that in subsequent videos. Okay, guys, hopefully that made sense. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.